So, hey everybody, welcome to Dave and Brian Live for August 1st, 2019. Happy August, everybody. Can't believe it's August already. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, uh, I don't know. We really don't have anything uh, interesting to talk about. Nothing happened today in the theme park in industry. So, nah. um, so what we're going to talk about first is our, our new segment. Uh, so, what went wrong last week? <laughs> um, our last show. And I was using this brand new microphone from Rode, which um, then broke. And I had another one sent from Australia <laughs> to, um, to replace the one that broke uh, because th it's a very new microphone model and there's a, a way to plug in an external microphone to it. And somehow in the manufacturing process, something went wrong. And when, soon, when you plugged in a, an external mic for the first time, it, um, wow, what's going on in my stream deck? Um, okay. Uh, when, I, when I plug in an external mic for the first time and unplug it, uh, the external mic no longer works and the internal mic no longer works. So basically it was dead. Um, also, I think I had my level set wrong or something like that. Mm. So um, we, we could at least hear you. That, that's the, the good Through part. that microphone. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't working at all, even though it was connected. So um, hope you guys are having a good Thursday or Friday or whatever day it is when you're watching this. Just uh, waiting for the chat room to get chatty. And, um, oh, hey guys. <laughs> Hi, Brandy. I was, I was thinking I have a fantastic day, but, but, it, it, but it's kind of epic. <laughs> so uh, I don't know why Universal didn't live stream this or um, one of the local channels was said they were going to live stream it and then I guess Universal told them not to. Uh, but then people posted the videos right afterwards, so I don't know what the, the difference is. So today, um, now the funny thing is, this was we were already planning on live streaming today. It just happened to um, happened to be on the same day as uh, the announcement, which Stella, get away from the trash, which is of course Universal's epic Universal Universe at Universal Orlando Universe Universe. <laughs> I believe that is the name. That, that's the, the full working title. Yes. I, I think uh, they're going, <clears throat> the short version is uh, Epic Universe. No, I think it's Universal's Epic Universe, Uni Universal Universe is, <laughs> is the short title. Um, <laughs> uh, nobody's using Faith No More's Epic in their marketing material. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would have been a good, a good idea. Well, they might have tried well, it and... and uh, well, Brandy, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you want it all, but you can't have it. <laughs> oh. What happened, Dave? Um, so we have uh, another person I work with who um, is uh, going to try to join us on, uh, on FaceTime in a little bit. I, I've set this up. Um, it might actually even work. I don't know. Uh, that's him um, talking. So, what what do you think about uh, epic epic uh, theme park time? Well, it, it seems cool. Um, it's going to be sort of off property. What you're going to have to do to get there is go either past endless summer uh, and uh, keep going a little bit down the road, or go down Kirkman to. Um, over by Akron Park, is that right, Dave? It's, wow, this is dropping out on me. Um, so yeah, it, what you do is, it's going to be, it's it's where the convention center is. So the so it's a, the cur current property, um, the end of summer, and then it's a little bit down the street. What they yeah. wanted to, I think, say in the chat, is, in, in the conference was, if you go to Disney World, you go from one park to the other, it's probably closer than these, the new park is going to be from our existing parks. But, you know, they're not going to say Disney because Disney's not going to say Universal. So, yeah. We're live now, comma, but we just started. So, this was anytime we'd be fine. 
Um, so it, we're live right now, comma. We just started, so whenever you're ready, period. The good news is, if you go to oh, shoot, that doesn't work. Um, hold on, I need to check. Because you're talking. All right. Uh, I uh, if you go to City Walk, there will be transportation to Epic Universe from City Walk. So it, it's not like a terrible journey. It you can still park in uh, the parking garages and go to Epic Universe and then come on back. Go to Islands if you want, or go to Universal, go on your favorite ride, or go see the nighttime lights at Hogwarts, or uh, Cinematic Celebration, or go on Fast and Furious if you're so inclined, if you like. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're supposedly widening Kirkman Road, uh, which is the road that goes past Universal and besides Universal Boulevard, which actually also um, runs right past this new property. Um, and it's not really new in a way because they had this property before. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they had actually more of it, uh, but they had to sell it, unfortunately, because they, um, they didn't have, well, one of the things that helped was uh, was Comcast. They said that in the press conference today, but it is really true. Um, they've had some not so great uh, owners in the past. Um, and remember, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's not a bad dog park. It's not a bad uh, theme park. It's just bad owners. Uh, well, the before Comcast came along, it was a uh, Blackstone. Is that right? Yeah, and then um, well, I forget the name of the. How it's pronounced? It's um, some French company, I think. And it's nothing against the French. It's just this specific company um, didn't know how to run a theme park, and it kind of ran it into the ground. And, and Blackstone. Vinvidi. Vin Vinvidi is it? Vividi, something like that. Blackstone didn't really like have much interest in theme parks. Uh, they happened to own the property. Yeah. Um, I think Blackstone is a real estate company. Is that right? Uh, I think it's more like hotels and stuff. Yeah. So they're like, okay, well, we've got this theme park. What do we do with it? Well, I don't know. And the weird thing is, I believe it is a theme uh, a hotel property, which uh, all the hotels on property are owned completely um, in the partnership with Lowe's, yeah. which apparently they had a, a 20th anniversary at Portofino Bay, um, which is a bummer because I would have liked to have been there for that, but yeah. I didn't know until after it happened. Yeah. Uh, because this year is the 20th anniversary for City Walk, the 20th anniversary for Islands Adventure, and of course the 20th anniversary of the partnership with Lowe's and Universal, starting with the Lowe's Royal Pacific mm -hmm. or Royal Specific. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not Royal Pacific. Um, the the Portofino Bay, and then later other hotels. Uh, so they had a that's in that um, the thing ready thing that we have um, that we get I guess quarterly um, uh, team everything yeah. so I uh, just want to say that anything we talk about uh, that wasn't specifically announced today is just speculation and just um, basically our interpretation based on being theme park enthusiasts and yeah. being around theme parks in general and uh, we are not spokespeople for Universal Orlando so please don't sue us. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think I mentioned this. Channel 2 promised a live stream. I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it. Um, and it didn't happen. Yeah. So I don't know what's up with that. So uh, Dan already streamed earlier i missed it because uh by, i was setting i was getting ready for this and um if you don't know who that is it's he has a channel midway mayhem mm -hmm. um he did a quick uh, live stream talking about it going over the uh i keep losing this the property this is the this is what the property is, is going to look like this is the concept rendering yeah um uh, i don't know it it looks kind of outdated to me it looks well, like something that like Disney would have put out like in the 90s. Yeah, but it's also concept art, it, it, the actual park. I actually kind of like this though. It, 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 it looks more like a carnival um, or maybe like a, it almost kind of reminds me of something like you would find in Vegas, like a theme park in Vegas. Yeah. Um, so. 
It's, I I don't think that it, I don't think it's that updated. And look at what? Oh, okay. This thing's freaking out. Okay, um, that's not good. But um, <clears throat> I don't think it looks up outdated. It, it, it's it's just concept art. It's um. We'll see how close we actually get to the actual art, but um, it, it looks cool to me. I, I, I definitely like the uh, fireworks going off. Yeah, well, that's something we knew was going to happen. Um, wow. We knew we were going to have fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <clears throat> it looks cool. I wish they told us like a little bit more. Um, about like what's gonna actually be in it, but that's that's all gonna come later and later. Um, I was thinking it was gonna be Nintendo World, Super Nintendo World. Yeah, um, but apparently not. Well, not yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, we, they haven't confirmed anything other than hey, it's happening. Yeah. Um, and they they showed uh, in person. They showed some some aerial video of. The property, which they've been working on for quite a while, mm -hmm. um, and if you look back here, I don't know. The software is kind of freaking out a little bit for yeah. some reason. Bear with us, guys. So, Brandy, how 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 is it on your end? Do you can you hear okay? Can you see everything all right? So I, I have a new mixing board, so would. It looks okay on my end, but I can't hear. Yeah. So, so the there's a lot of water in, in the middle, which kind of seems to take up a lot of space. I think um, you'd want to. I would think that you'd want to have a lot of things right away. Um, people have pointed out the different areas, what they speculate it means, what it's going to be. Um, I no, uh, we didn't yeah. get any heads up. Uh, the first thing I first I found actually found out about it with because uh, there was a. A, um, a news chopper flying overhead, uh, which over the park, which happens all the time. But hey, Stella! Stella, come here. Which happens all the time. But uh, it was flying over for like 20 minutes. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> um, so I went to their website and it, uh, it said, it po posted the announcement. And that's actually, honestly, the first time I've heard of it. Um, and I was like, oh. They're finally going to announce something. What could it be? I like how, oh, thank you, Brandy. Um, I like how everyone um, on the news and, and everything is like, well, speculation is it could be the next theme park. Universal owns 500 acres they just purchased. Uh, and we're thinking it could be a theme park. Like what, what else is it gonna be? Well, it could be more hotels. Storage for, storage for churros? It, it could be that too. Like, but they're not going to put hotels all the way over there and and just hotels and five hundred acres. But they they can't, like, say for sure. And you know, like theme in the theme park industry, things change. So but, I mean, it was obvious it was going to be a theme park. That's, you know, what specifically that we still don't really know officially. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting to see that, um, here in the. Uh, down in the bottom left, you can see what looks like a, a traditional Universal Studios um, archway, yeah, which yeah. is interesting. I thought they wouldn't be replicating that with this one, but um, they are. Let me just uh, switch back over here. But uh, the, the whole thing about water in, in the middle, that's, that's a tradition. Uh, like every theme park does that. Yeah, I think it has, well, that too, but I think it's also because it's... Um, Central Florida, and there's you know, lakes everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it might it might be a legal thing uh, that because they did mention um, like swamp restoration and or preserving the swamp um, and uh, and uh, I think there's a certain amount of wetland they have to um, keep to. For for ecological, whoops. Let's see if this works. Hello. Hello, I, I can hear you. Caller, you're on the air. <laughs> awesome. See awesome. how this is working. So, 
What do we feel? How do we feel about uh, today's announcement? Epic. Epic Universal. Uh, epic Universe. Yes. Okay, also, um, guys, who are, if you're watching, please let us know if the uh, uh, his audio is coming through. It should. Yeah, we're on FaceTime right now with somebody special guest. Huh. Sorry, I turned down the mixer before because it was head head off. Okay. By the way, hello. So this is this is Brett, who's just who I was referring to, um, was is going to be joining the show for very. Are you kidding me? Hold on, let's try this again. Sorry, it, it went to my phone instead of the computer. I guess I have to answer on the computer. Technology. So, um, what are you two doing? Really, guys? Anyway, go ahead and like say something. Okay. Uh, Brady actually has a question. It, a little off topic, but um, do you want me to read it? Okay, like say something. We're dead air right now. Looking at each other's faces to death. <laughs> Well, um, so Brandy, uh, per, Phenomenal Brandy asked, uh, maybe too personal of a question because of money, but how do you all feel about the park starting wage at 15? Do you think a lot of team members will transfer there? Um, I that's, think it, that's going to be resort wide. So Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this should be working now. All right. Hello. I definitely hear you. Hello. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Oh. Didn't anticipate I'll need my headphones, but they're right here. So, um, all right. So, uh, as I was saying before, um, Brandy I, uh, was talking about the uh, fifteen dollars an hour, which is something we kind of figured was going to happen because of um, you know Disney already announced that a while ago. But it's nice to know officially that's going to come to that for us. Yeah. So I think first, it's very. I think it's very good. Uh, it it really is going to help the employees. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see how they bring this park to life. Uh, if you know Sand Lake Road right now is kind of a mess, it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see. How it's going? How they're going to be able to make that traffic flow a lot better than it does now? What do you think about the? Um, that's just a layout. Someone was saying to me, um, it's very reminiscent of what we just saw recently for uh, the new Epcot layout, and I, I compared the two concept pictures and. It's very eerily similar, similar, but like there's still distinctness to how Epic Universe is going to be set up. I'm not kind of a fan of the whole entire setup because I think they could have done more. But I guess we'll see when they officially announce what they have. Yeah. Um. What do you think about the, the the repetitive name, Universal's Epic Universe? It's better than Fantastic wor Worlds, to be honest. <laughs> um, not that Fantastic Worlds is a terrible name, and it's not really that good of a name either. But I think Fantastic and, Worlds was going to possibly be with Fantastic Beasts. Well, yeah. Well... As, as I am aware, they really? they wanted to, but people would have just said, oh, well, fantastic piece right there. And um, I think this gives more of a wider range of things to be inside these lands. Yeah, well, uh, someone pointed out, I don't know if it was... Um officially said i didn't really hear it but uh that a universe is bigger than the world i'm like yeah that's true I'm like oh i think i know what they're going where they're going with that the universe is better than bigger than a 
world. <laughs> what theme park could have world in its name instead of universe? <laughs> hmm. Well, I was reading that. I was reading that. Whoop. The heck? Just clicked on it and went away. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. As, as, um, as you know, I saying, when you try new stuff, things are going to break. <laughs> as I was saying, um, I, I was reading that article where they, they said, said that, that, and I, I think it's kind of funny. Crap, I just, but, that's um, great. I just trans, uh, live streamed my email address. <laughs> <laughs> but, um,. I, I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what they officially announce. And I don't know if you saw it, but I saw it. And some of the leaked concept photos that are for the supposed lands uh, are very, very similar to some of the concept pictures. Oh, OK. Let me just be right so, back. I'm going to get a splitter. Okay. Go ahead and uh, talk with Brian for a second. Sorry, folks. Oh, uh, also, Brandy, just let us know if you can hear if you can hear him. I can hear you very slightly. Really? What about me? Can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. And but by the way, Brett, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I know I would have been there, but things things came up. That's cool. Uh, why don't you slightly introduce yourself to uh, our fans and uh, tell us who you are and what you do? Well, my name is Brett. I go of I go a, as a bunch of different sure. names. Uh, Vicious there. Smile Productions is one of the many things I do. Uh, I do video production. I do music production. I also run a photo page, uh, Vicious Smile Photography. Um, and I really just take pictures of parks, and it's pretty much a photo blog of what I do. Well, cool. Uh, say one more time what you do uh, before work. One second, um, I'm going to split off here. Well, I, I do... Uh, theme park stuff okay cool thank you brett all right so i got a splitter now i just did the uh the old naked gun trick of uh you know, i went <laughs> to the restroom and i had my wireless microphone on but uh <laughs> but just kidding guys it was water <laughs> i did that last week but last show but it didn't quite work because uh my uh Microphone wasn't loud enough, and I'm already on my second road microphone, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Well, it's coming in clear right now, so. Yeah. Uh, I had the settings wrong as usual. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, looking at what, did you, did, were you surprised that there's a uh, traditional gate that uh, the arches? To be honest, yeah, I was really, really surprised, especially since it's going to be arch. I, I find it kind of, it's going to be kind of weird that both Universal Orlando and then like this new park is going to have two different arches. Yeah, but it still has the same, same layout as far as um, the three on one side and the two on the other. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's also interesting that Islands doesn't have that archway. It, it has a completely different entranceway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of waiting for them to say, well... The backstory of this theme park is that a bunch of people came on a boat and decided to stay because <laughs> that's, that's, that's islands. That, that's that's islands and Volcano Bay. Oh, oh that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> it's like well, that's their thing now. It's probably it's probably gonna go in the theming of it's a space boat that came to this new casino planet. Yeah. That'd be cool, honestly. Yeah, it's like that that would be well, cool. The casino planet that, like um like like Invader Zim. <laughs> they, they Gam came, Gambolonia so I don't or something. Know where I heard, heard that 
there's a possible rumor casino actually going to be going in the uh, little shopping area. I know. Well, wasn't the um, wasn't the Swan and Dolphin supposed to have a a casino, but Florida didn't vote for it? I'm not sure about that. Uh, that that's what I was, I've been told. I don't know if that's true. I I know that the like the middle part that I'm hearing is going to be similar to a free flowing city walk type thing that that you have to pay to get into those different lands, quote unquote. Um, I'm just really surprised that they didn't announce more to everything, especially like details of like what could be possibly there out of the gate we already know that super nintendo is going to be going there because we're just destined to get it between japan and california it was just the matter of we know it's coming to orlando because they already they already said that well yeah and it was just the amount of where they're going to put it and if you if you look very closely in the one corner of the map, it Which doesn't. Um, I want to say like the left-hand corner, below below like the little village type area on the top corner. Um, it it's very similar to the layout that has been leaked for Nintendo already. Just, just without, without the crazy colors mm-hmm. you you see the two levels you see the two level uh uh layout that they're trying to do and then you see behind it is like this jungle type thing which is supposed to be donkey kong coaster it's interesting to have that sort of amphitheater in the top left corner that has like little flags kind of like ESP or something like that. I'm really very, I I personally think it's going to be monsters, which they were saying that was going to be monsters. There's also rumors that it's all going to be fantastic beasts, but I don't think that whole entire area, even though it's just a concept picture, it just doesn't fit with any idea that I, I've seen or may have thought of with this new park. I also figure that a lot of the areas with trees, it might be future expansion, but be- between Universal and, and it's kind of a theme park thing, I think a lot of that's back to house. They like to pretend that it doesn't exist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, and that's not just, uh, it's just not just here. It's, you, if you go to Disney and you look at one of their maps, and you see trees all over the place, and you look at it on Google Maps, and you're like, oh, those aren't trees. Those yeah. are buildings and yeah. cars. And the funny thing about I'm them, just very disappointed that they are building just one theme park. They have so much space over yeah. in that area well, they, to build I'm, more I'm sure than one. Build everything at once. They, they probably well, should. true, but like they didn't announce like future plans. Yeah. It also kind of, I, I find it hard to, to figure, uh, based on this image, um, maybe I just didn't look at it a little long enough, how much of the land is taken up by by this rendering. It looks pretty huge, so it yeah. must, be, must be a lot of it, but I, I doubt it's all of it. And, and you, you have to keep in mind, they're going to have that uh, supposed uh, flatland parking, just like how Magic Kingdom and all yeah. the Disney parks go. And they don't have that in the concept, even though you wouldn't put that in a concept picture, but yeah. still. And the large fountain also looks pretty interesting because it's in front of what, look, I don't know what else it would be besides a hotel. There's a large area. If you look a little closer, you can see it looks like seating area. So I'm thinking like there's a big like a USCC type of show at night, which will be cool because you'll be able to see it from the hotel too. It'll be it'll be something kind of maybe similar to like the Bellagio, but going yeah. back to what I just you know, said earlier like with that, um, the concept pictures for um, Epcot, they're using they're they're swapping back and forth ideas and stealing from each other with some yeah. of these ideas, and 
they're, they're, they both have water features, and I, I think it's it's just going to be interesting to see how they pull together this this new park. But uh, like your point, like I, I find it interesting that Universal innovates, Disney innovates, Universal innovates again, Disney innovates again. Like we're kind of each park is is making each uh, the other park strive for better. Yeah. Well, I know one thing. Whatever it is, it's going to be epic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think they really, they did something good with, ex, like, revealing the new park this month because D23 is coming up and God knows what they're going to be announcing. I, I really I don't, don't know. It's not think going to be a new park, I'm sure, but it's been a while. It, they have the hey, space. You never we know that. You never know. You <laughs> never know. They got that all that space right recently, and yeah, could be. I, I mean, that'd I, be pretty amazing for them. I, I um, doubt that they're going to make a whole entire fifth park too, but. I was the, just the to Magic Kingdom is, today, is just and growing crazy. Yeah. Every every single theme park. Is, is growing right now. Yeah. Um, Legoland and, uh, you know, out, out west, I guess. Well, obviously, um, obviously, uh, Disneyland just expanded mm -hmm. as well. They <laughs> took out some back of house stuff. Um, but, you know, nothing like, about Ghost Town. Even, even like California and Universal Hollywood right now, like they, they expanded. They just, they're, they're working on their. Uh, Nintendo Land. Apparently, I was just at Magic Kingdom today, and they're still working all on the um, the the tram area for a ticket ticketing center. Oh yeah. Um, they're they're still working on the the little moat around the castle. Um, in Liberty Square, they're starting to do some theming on, on like the wall for the the water, which I don't know how how necessary it was, but they're really just trying to ramp up uh, little projects around there for the 50th anniversary in 2021. Yeah. Disneyland, I walked down Main Street and like I looked down the at the end of the castle, I'm like, oh. Wow, look at that tiny castle. How cute. Because <laughs> I'm so used to seeing Cinderella's castle, which is so much bigger. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of funny. Yeah. And it, they're, they're still working. Tron, I, took, I was just at, by Tron today, and it's really surprising how much they got done with that coaster already. And... Yeah, the track went up they're, fast. They're going to be, I think, starting to enclose it very shortly because the, I don't know how much more they could do outside, but it, it's coming It's coming up very fast. And in this rendering here, um, there's a, a roller coaster that, looks, that has a, a building that looks a lot like Hollywood Ripped by Rocket. Um, hmm. If you look at the uh, over here on the, the bottom right, the yeah. covering is even the same kind of color, if I remember correctly. But it's kind of that cylinder shape over it. Um, I'm thinking that this land is going to have to have at least several good sized coasters, um, um, maybe even some record setting coasters, because that's one of the things I hear all the time about about Universal Orlando is. Oh man, you guys need more coasters. Where are your coasters? This is it. This is all the coasters. I'm like, you know, it's a, it's a theme park, not an amusement park. Okay. But it, um, I I saw that, and I just saw recently. Um, somebody made the comparison online that that whole entire uh, roller coaster is very sim similar setup to the dragon races in How to Train Your Dragon. Hmm. So somebody actually uh, had a screenshot of that part in, I guess, the second movie, and uh, it it really matches up. And I think we're all going to find out by ourselves and on our own 
what these lands are really going to be. And then it's not going to be a very big surprise to us. Yeah. Well, they've already given a bunch of sort of details here, even though it's it's a sketch and it's kind of not very specific. And it's, it's very not, not, not specific, and it's not just like popping out. Any of this out. could change. Yeah. And also, I noticed that um, on that coaster, it's it is it might just be concept art, uh, the way it's drawn drawn, but it, it almost looks like it might have some LEDs on the tracks. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, kind of it, like um, Slinky Dog. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they continue going onto the, uh, you know, what Intamins built Hagrid, they're supposedly building the un unnamed project. Um, in Jurassic Park, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be working on new coasters for this new park. Yeah. Well, we know now because we, we see right there in the, in the concept art, but um, how many, how big, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm still surprised that, that they fit what's supposedly the longest coaster in Florida uh, in where Dragons was, <laughs> but that's what they say. Uh, it's well, almost I mean, a mile. I mean, you can and bend track all, all you want, and it can make it longer and longer as much as you want it. Another thing I'm hoping for in this new land is more indoor rides, um, because over at Universal Studios, there's a lot of indoor attractions, and when, when there's lightning around, some things close like Rocket and, and all that, but if you're over in Islands and, the, and there's a thunderstorm, and there's lightning too close. Like more than half of the attractions have to close. Yeah. And that's a lot of things that you can't do suddenly. And it's even worse when it's a corporate and they spent gobs of money to be there. And they're like, sorry, I guess you just walk around for a while. Yeah. Uh, besides, you know, the obvious of, oh, it's hot outside. <laughs> well, I mean, you can, you can obviously see some of the areas have show building type uh, buildings in there. I, what like huge too to the to what extent especially the one in the right top corner that looks like some sort of a cityscape that i am i'm still not sure what that could be uh people are thinking it's going to be a fantastic beast it's just going to be kind of weird having two different versions of new york yeah. In oh, two yeah, different yeah. parks. But uh, this, if it is Fantastic Beasts, it'll be old New York. Like back in the, uh, when Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts takes place, which is the 1940s? 19, 1920s. Okay. It, well, yeah, I think it's 1920s. And some parts of New York in Universal Studios is already kind of old, old looking and starts themed. They're kind of themed 1920s already, which I right. would just, I'd be surprised that they're going to make another type of old style New York. I wonder what the pyro is going to be like because uh, there's not nearly as many um, residents over there in, hmm. in the immediate area. That, that's the problem. Because the problem with uh, Universal is that a lot of people live there long before they opened the first park. Yeah. Unlike Disney, who was there longer ago and they have more, um, they have more land. So um, yeah. obviously we know Pyro's, Pyro is going to happen because it's in the concept art. But I think they might be able to get away with long, louder, higher, but we'll, we'll, have, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely think they're going to have louder fireworks. They'll probably have a much better fireworks show uh, as it as for a parade, as for a parade, I'm not, I'm not really sure how a parade <laughs> would work. I don't either, but we'll see. I, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna have a superstar uh, number two coming around. <laughs> well, some people might say it already is. Um, <laughs> we the but the the parade route in. Magic Kingdom isn't very long, or even what we saw for the 30th anniversary of of um, Hollywood Studios. Studios. Uh, that was that was a short route too, so you know it's possible. Um, 
you know, it's possible that we could. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it could just go around one of those curve areas. Yeah. The, um, the middle part I'm thinking is more, of, I, it's hard to say. I, I was thinking it's more like a city walk, like you don't need a ticket, but um, there is an arch in front, so I don't know. That, that's what, that's what I've been, that was what everybody's been saying that I've talked to. Um, I, I'm not really familiar with how Hollywood's arch is set up. And it's kind of reminding me of how Hollywood Universal is set up in a way with the with City Walk being in the middle of those the like high low uh, lower lot and uh, upper lot type yeah. thing. And, and then, I, um, I hope that's not the case because is I I feel if you're gonna have to leave once one land to get back to the other that it's just gonna it's gonna suck it's gonna kind of take away from everything well speaking of arches in disney they have that really really awkward arch inside of hollywood studios it looks like it should be the outside of the park but it's like in the middle like, you want to know what's mm -hmm. up with that that's kind of weird well you gotta remember they had a different idea for that area than they do now. Yeah. And, so and eventually did, that Universal area will be gone. Universal Studios and that didn't really, that's, that's been changing slowly too. Mm -hmm. um, but basically this is, this is what's, what was promised 20 years ago when they first bought the land, just a smaller version. There, that version was, was, even, was even bigger. Like when um, Universal Studios Florida opened, they had a, a crazy ambitious expansion plan and two three years after opening universal studios they already planned city walk and islands of adventure and hotels and then they bought 1800 acres it was pretty impressive and what they actually did when you look at those parking garages and city walk and all that it less than a, that's less than a decade later that's that's a oops that's a pretty that's a pretty impressive expansion it's, it's unfortunate that they weren't able to keep that going because they, they had a lot more land but it is now coming and obviously it's a modern theme park as opposed to what would have been built back then which mm -hmm. would have aged um all that being built within a decade it would have aged all at the same time so mm -hmm. in a way it's good i just wish they had that extra space i mean i kind of feel like the the new land is kind of a small area compared to what it should have been I, again i kind of expect it a little bit more but yeah. that, that's just my opinion oh and uh, uh brandy says that uh, there's a lot of fountains in that picture maybe uh maybe use them like a bigger better cel cinematic celebration that's what i was saying before about the um the round one that's right in front of what looks like what i'm sure is a hotel because uh, mm -hmm. there is there is seating in there, so um, I'm assuming that uh, there's a show. And again, like I said, uh, if you're on the one side of the hotel, uh, you can you should be able to see that show from from within that hotel, which would be pretty. Cool. Well, yeah, I I is. think they want to kind of have like the Bellagio type yeah. of deal, which so I'm guessing that'd be that'd, that'd be interesting. interesting. Yeah, I'm guessing some of those will move. Um, it's in a circle in Lake Bellagio, but yeah, <laughs> that'd be kind of interesting. It looks like it's a, um, actually, a, it's hard to say, like, it looks like a larger area than, than the USCC is right now as well. So obvious things that they announced today that everyone knew already was a new theme park. Yeah. Well, what else are they going to use the 500 acres for, you know, uh, hotels, <laughs> yeah. but they're not going to just use it for hotels. It's, um, you know, like churro storage. <laughs> churro. Um, and we knew we, there's more parks, superstar. There be restaurants and hotels. Um, more so superstar park, storage. storage. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> um, props. It's gonna be one long scare zone. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice though. That would be nice. A 500 acre scare zone. But other other than like kind of being disappointed about the size of the the area and everything i'm really surprised they didn't announce any 
current theme park, uh, you know, updates. Yeah. Like, I expected possibly Terminator uh, replacement. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It's been a while. Co a confirmation of what's being built in Jurassic Park. Yeah, but fantastic. Uh, the Hagrid's magical creature motorbike adventure was like, 50 to 60 percent done at least before they announced what that was going to be yeah other than a highly themed roller coaster based on harry potter <laughs> that's all they said and like you can see the track you can see the theming and like when are they going to announce what it actually is it took them a while you yeah. know it was it was hard to keep it a secret when you go backstage and you see all these tra that track and you're like uh i don't know you know, that's like some of the things we know about Halloween Horror Nights, but we can't say yet. Yeah. Which, uh, <laughs> by the way, I think they're starting to decorate. They um, are. They get. Yeah. They, they put up the lighting truss for um for Central Park. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, they are. The, I saw them putting out more the other night. So they're getting ready. Get they're getting get some video of that too. They're getting ready because they'll oh, be oh, here hey, soon. Matthew. Hey Matthew, how's it going? Hi, Matt. So um, I might have to uh, delete the live stream and um, upload this video separately because um, I didn't realize I opened the preferences in my FaceTime and I might have put some, uh, it's probably, it's already on the internet, it's too late, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, hopefully I won't get spammed to death. Well, I mean, it, it wasn't up for long. <laughs> no, long enough, but uh, anyway. Um, quick break. I wanted to sh forget. I forgot before I forget. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys the uh, the bag I got at, at um, VidCon. Whoa! Isn't look it? At, look at that, Dave. It looks pretty cool. I I, I like it. <laughs> so, um, see uh, what it says here. It just got this nice logo and stuff. So I just you know forgot to show you guys that last time. <laughs> <So. laughs> So before I, before we end the stream, I'm like, oh, I didn't show him again. And then, of course, you know, the, the Dave mug. Um, if you watch my uh, video from the uh, Peanuts headquarters, you can actually watch the moment when I realized I had to buy it. Because I keep going to all these different theme park stores and seeing uh, different names on things and David's and, like, two rows of Dave's. And I'm like, you never have a Dave. And I've been saying that for a while. And then it's like, oh. Um, oh, there is a Dave. Well, I guess I'm buying it now. <laughs> By the way, uh, Boydy62 is here. Hi. Hey. Uh, he says, sorry I'm late. 745 Friday morning here in Sydney and working hard too early. Uh, good morning. Good morning. You missed our, my uh, announcement of the, uh, the microphone I just had uh, delivered because the original microphone I had um, had a design flaw and they sent me uh, it's like second day UPS shipping direct from Australia, so nice. That's right. always fun. <laughs> yep. And then it got stuck in somewhere in Kentucky because of rain or something. Like, yeah. Okay. And then it arrived uh, by airplane. I'm like, why did flooding stop an airplane from flying over to here? But anyway, it came pretty quickly, so that was cool. <laughs> Uh, Brandy's heading out. I got cut out a little early, guys, but I'll catch up the update. Have an epic night. Have a good night, Brandy. Thank you. Um, I didn't get to the part where uh, where I talked about the Patreon stuff, but you can watch it later. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll get my link somewhere somehow. Yeah, I'll um I'll put that in when I update the description, with, which thankfully I think did. Yep. It did actually go through. One of the things about live streaming with with YouTube is, I'll I'll update the information for that week's show, and I'll go live and I'm like, oh cool, it's showing me, um, it's showing information from the previous stream, even though I updated it. It mm -hmm. didn't save for some reason. I don't know why it does that. It's really annoying. So, as far as California. Um, that was a really great trip. That was really awesome. I got to see a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I actually didn't even 
wasn't considering going to um, to uh, uh, Galaxy's Edge. No, to um, Nosbury Farm um, until you until you mentioned it. You said you, know, you said that that would be something you probably would go to, and I was like, oh, you know, I should go. I I just assumed it was like an hour, an hour and a half away, two hours away, because you know California, did, like Florida, is a huge state, and then I found out. Oh, it's ten miles away. Uh, yeah, I definitely need to definitely need to go. And and you didn't even go to Magic Mountain. You would have been. Yeah. You you would have been there days and days just going to the parks. Yeah, um, but I did go, <laughs> did go into Galaxy's Edge, went on the ride and was done. We're like, okay, that was a neat. That was a short line. Which which is strange to me that. Uh... Galaxy does was pretty much a walk on. Yeah, it's was, it was pretty pretty fast. I mean, I don't it, think it, it was a single riders. I think I might have gone to single riders, but even then. And it, it's funny, like in your video, you're going through the the you know queue area, and you're you know just showing us, and then this lady's like walking out, like, oh, why are people walking out? She's like, the line's too long. I'm like, what? Yeah, and then I got on it with less than thirty minutes. I don't know what's. Like okay, well, thank you for making the line shorter by one person. <laughs> well, I I heard between the uh, reservations and blockouts for certain passes, and there's another thing that somebody mentioned that there's really nothing for kids there to do. It's not something. A lot of kids want to do, I guess. I don't know. I personally, I can't are, wait are to... Are kids no longer interested in Star Wars? I I have no idea. I mean... Because, I mean, I, was, I think I was watching Star Wars when I was... I remember seeing uh, Empire Strikes Back in the theater. No, uh, Return of the Jedi in the theater. And I was... I, I was only a few years old. But I, I remember seeing Return of the Jedi in the theater. And, I mean, Star Wars has always been a part of my childhood. You know, like, um, uh, this guy doesn't happen to like Star Wars, but I mean, <laughs> but you know, you, know, you know, as far as people our age go, you know, like we grew up on Star Wars and, and Dave does not like Star Wars. <laughs> um, Here comes all the hate. hate <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's fine. You know, like, you know, if you don't like yeah. Star Wars, you don't like Star Wars. Yeah. But, um, hi, hi, Merle. Um, and then, you know, like, um. I know, like, uh, there are some kids who are, I guess, now 20-somethings who grew up on the prequels. Yeah. Um, so, Sorry. Uh, Sorry for them. <laughs> but it, it just it seems weird to me that, like, kids are no longer interested in Star Wars. That just sounds bizarre. It also doesn't help that they have two rides in the land and only one of them is actually open. Oh, True. yeah. And it also is the pricing of everything. They really, they really shot, shot themselves, themselves in the, in the foot, foot with... with have it, how much like a lightsaber is it's not a two hundred dollar lightsaber isn't accessible compared to a fifty dollar or thirty dollar one from the wizarding world yeah sure sure what is the minimum cost for a uh, a wizarding world wand that uh, is is interactive uh, and because that's a big dif difference and it um, I know, I know from my experiences, like non-interactive ones are thirty dollars, mm -hmm. and the interactive ones are fifty. So yeah, that that sounds about right. And it again, you're gonna spend two or four hundred dollars for each kid to get a lightsaber. And, like, you really can't do much of anything in land with it. Yeah. There, there is um, what are called kyber crystals, and um, there's little boxes to put them in to learn more about the land. It tells more stories. And I think it's cool. They're about 50 bucks. The extra little crystals are, like, 12 or something. But they're, like, a little chunk of plastic with an RFID chip inside them. So... Do they activate anything in the, the land? Because even start, um, the Sesame Street area with uh, at SeaWorld 
has yeah. the uh, the bubble the bubble ones that that do the same thing. If you, you use them in certain spots, they activate different um, different effects. Like just well, like the, I, the Disney Play app, you can interact with. Um, it turns your phone into like a data pad, and um, it tracks. I guess your score when you go on Falcon and everything, and um, That's cool. you you just can interact with different things. You can read what's in this cargo. Um, I know I saw that there is Leia's costume from uh, Return of the Jedi. I think when she's um, the bounty hunter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. So she, that outfit, that costume is apparently in one of the cargo containers it's just laying around there. I wonder if this is a, a little bit because they don't have magic bands out west. And it, it brings a little well, bit Well, that. It'll be the same thing here, apparently. It yeah. just kind of really won't be needed. Plus, I mean, as much as I love the interactive magic band um things that are say, at magic kingdom and i i think they're pretty pretty cool but it kind of is weird when you see a little pad to swipe your band on and people are just like looking at you weird, like you're doing something wrong or, <laughs> or it's a secret nobody else knows so um tomorrow switching a little bit in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in August 2nd of 1999, um, people were seeing dead pe people. I see dead people. So, spoilers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> spoilers for a 20-year-old movie. <laughs> um, so I knew, I knew the spoiler twist of, of, uh, of Sixth Sense uh, before. I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was if it was a good movie or not, I didn't know if I'd like it, but so I knew the spoiler of of um, Bruce Willis's character mm -hmm. being dead before, and, and I, I still I still really enjoyed the uh, the movie anyway a lot. I, I also knew the the spoiler before seeing the Sixth Sense, and I I worked at a movie theater. I, I worked at a second run movie theater. It wasn't like the movie was brand new. Um, what them them running around like blah, blah, blah. yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, it actually kind of makes the, the movie like, like, like I said, it's still enjoyable. Like, uh, it's almost like you can watch the movie twice. Uh, yeah. if you don't know the spoiler, you can watch the movie and be like, oh, wow. And then you can watch the movie again. And like, the, there's little things to see, um, where you, uh, uh like, okay, all right, cool. And, and when you're in on it, it, it's like, it's almost like a different movie. Um, it was, uh. A movie came out like a year ago that had crazy rewatchability. Um, I, f I forget the title right now, but uh, yeah, it, you could watch it and then watch it again, knowing the twists, and and like almost like see a different movie. I mean, it's the same movie, but like you're yeah. seeing it from a different angle. Like Fight Club does that too. Yeah, you know, like, like you you could see Fight Club for the first time, not know anything about it, and then watch it a second time, and it's a new experience, even though it's the exact same movie. Yeah, which also came out in 99. Yeah. Um, even though it's kind of messed up, um, I, I, um, I really like that scene in the funeral home um, where the, uh, but it's an awesome scene, but there's a, eh, it's, you kind of have to suspend your disbelief sometimes. Like, okay, so first the girl knew something was up and like that something's weird with her food. And then, so she hit a camera where she can get, where she can get to it, um, who knows where it was? Because it's like way back from the, from the like dresser, uh, and then she had the camera recording her, her mom, but somehow her mom, looking right at the in this, the area where the camera was, didn't see the camera, uh, but knew to face the camera. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading this, but I, I just, um, oh, okay. Um, anyway, uh, we will continue this discussion, but uh, thank you to uh, Brett for joining us, hopefully in a 
Yeah, yeah you're you, welcome. Brett. I'll probably Thank be you, on. Brett. Uh, hopefully I'll, in the future I'll he'll be sure. he'll be in studio and um, I won't give away my social security number online or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be but most likely your uh, your Disney guy from now on. So. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're gonna work for Disney? I have an annual pass, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean we like Disney too a lot, but yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we don't we don't get there out there as much as as, as uh, we'd like to. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> But thanks for joining right. us. Yeah, thank you, Brett. You're welcome, guys. And thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, you'll have all my links down below, and I'll yeah, send those. Yeah, once I figure out what I'm going to do with the, <laughs> with the description and yeah. the upload and all that stuff. So. All right. All right. Peace out, guys. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. All right. So that's um, that went yeah, not terrible. Smooth. So yeah, um, sorry. I'm I'm gonna read the list because when I was going over it, I'm like I'm gonna forget a lot of details. Uh, so the girl knew something was up. Uh, she hit a camera. Uh, where she hit the camera, who knows? Um, the camera was recording without the mom knowing, even though the mom was facing the camera. Uh, the mom stops to read the label on the. It looks like a, something like pine saw maybe, um, and you know, as if the way she does it, it looks like she's okay. Uh, how to poison someone like like that's going to be on the label. Um, also, uh, it's convenient that the mom poisons the girl's food in front of the girl, which like I'm not saying like I'm not advocating poisoning people, but like do it in another room, <laughs> you know. Um, the girl must have watched the tape later because she knew something was happening, and she knew what it was, but didn't tell anyone, even her like family members. Um, and then somehow the, the I see dead people kid uh, came to her house and somehow got into her bedroom. Um, and somehow uh, the C I see dead people kid uh, found the VHS tape, which was not really hidden, but somehow his, her, his mom, or her mom didn't. And at the found the right time at the funeral after party I don't I guess it's a I don't know what that's really, really called but to uh, to play the tape mm -hmm. so uh, nice trip to the plot convenience store well <clears throat> for the first half I, I think it, it's um mo movies have to be a little weird with how things happen because the audience needs to understand what is going on so the fact that the mom is conveniently in front of a hidden camera and like clearly reading like pine saw or you know something it, it, it's meant more for the viewer to understand okay this and this and this is happening instead of it being like a realistic depiction of what would happen had someone like you know gone whoop, whoop a little bit of pine saw in, in uh, dave's coffee there and yeah. or dave's tea um but yeah and what i'm talking about is uh when you've seen, when you know the twist to uh, the sixth sense, that kid's walking around that house by himself, and you know, like, yeah, Bruce Willis is with him, but nobody else in that movie sees Bruce Willis. Only he does. Yeah. Um, so, and like, some of the other ghosts, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, when you watch it, it's kind of funny, like seeing him. Like, yeah, he's accompanied by an adult, but he's not really accompanied. And so, like, all these adults are just, like, you know, like, completely cool with just some kid just, like, wandering around at a funeral. Like, like not even like, a, hey, who are you? Like, who do you know here? And, yeah. um, you know, it's just, it, it, yeah, he goes up to her room by himself. You know, yeah, he's got an adult, but nobody sees that adult. That adult's a ghost. Um, yeah. I don't think he was in that scene, was he? Yeah. I was? I, well, at least it's been a long time since I've seen the six, but I think he was there. Um. Yeah, I, I, I kind of remember when the, he goes up the stairs, like Bruce Willis is behind him. So I think he was there, but like, I, I might be wrong, but I, yeah. that's the way I remember it. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, like and when he's in the room, there's, you know, the, the kid figures it out. You know, like Bruce Willis yeah. is just kind of like there. Um, and yeah, like he, find, he finds the tape and he sees it and he plays it and then everyone's like, oh no, what's going on? Um, but yeah, it, it is a good movie. Um, yeah. Uh, and the thing about it is, like, the very first scene, 
when he gets shot at, he, he's just shot like down here, and like it, it's it seems like a wound that someone could survive. Mm -hmm. um, that they okay, he went to the hospital and you know in the in the emergency room, but he might have lived. Yeah, and so at least the way uh, that I saw the wound, it looked like it wasn't necessarily fatal, uh, which was um, important for the, the movie, of course. You have to believe that Bruce Willis's character, uh, I don't remember what his character's name is, yeah, me neither. Um, was still alive. Uh, and then, of course, you find out later on that it, he, his character was not. Yeah. So. But uh, uh, the, the twist is a good twist, especially if you've got, if you have no idea, if you're just like watching The Sixth Sense and you don't know anything about the twist, you don't know that M. Night Shyamalan is known for twist endings. Yeah. It, you're just like, oh, okay, the sixth sense. Like, uh, all right, so there's a psychic kick. Okay, let's let's see it. Let's check it out. Um, the the twist is uh, very smooth, especially for an M Night movie, um, where uh, it it comes out kind of slowly and smoothly, and and then you're like realize like, oh no, and like um, that's why I think uh, it's it's a good movie to like watch fresh. And then watch again, knowing the twist, because uh, like it, it's a different experience. Even though it's the exact same movie, you know, yeah, like you, you see with like a different perspective. And that that scene with the funeral is pretty pretty amazing because uh, she's just standing there talking to the other people, and and then um, I guess everyone stops talking because the father is in the other room, and she turns around and he's standing there with everybody else behind him looking at her with like anger and sadness and yeah he says something i i, I found the clip on on youtube but I, I couldn't understand what he said um um and then that was the end of the clip but that was such an amazing uh part of yeah. the movie um and then like when he goes to the school and it's like they, they used to hang people here and he was and the teacher was getting mad at him from saying that but then he walked he walked um, in the hallway and he saw the, the bodies hanging. And it's like, whoa, that's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. Uh, there's a few kind of gross out moments in it, a little bit. But it just overall, the, the, it was a really good story and you know, a really good movie. Yeah. Um, and kind of like you know, what happened to him. <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan. Um, he, he got a lot of hype. Um, and someone pointed out, all right, let's let's pretend you're um, you're a professional athlete, and your team happens to, or you happen to be a, a key player in two championships back to back. You've got a lot of pressure on you now to do like this third thing, and so he had a lot of hype, um, and a lot of people were interested in him. A lot of people were like looking in his way, and. He became known as the twist ending director, so that was one thing. Um, it it kind of was his thing um, to, to have like twist endings, but when you know that and you know it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie, then you're expecting it, and the, the surprise isn't that great. And then, uh, so I think, I think uh, there's several things that happened. Um, um, being known as the, the twist ending director was, was probably a big one that. Uh, People were like, okay, well, where's the twist? You're know, like, I'm waiting for it. And then, yeah. oh, that's the twist? Oh, man, that's kind of lame, I guess. And um, Yeah. Uh, and I think I think there were, like, mistakes were made. Um, like, I heard um, The Visit, like, is really good. Even though if you know um, uh, there's going to be a twist ending. Like, I, I think uh, I, I heard a lot of good things about The Visit, which was... Two years ago? Three years ago? I don't know. Um, I don't remember what other movies of his I've watched. So there's The Sixth Sense, uh, Lady in the Water, nope. The Village. Nope. The only thing, I, the only thing, only thing I saw from The Village was the parody in one of the scary movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they're a devil. Um. Uh, the Happening. Yeah, I must have only watched that one then. Yeah. I have picked a good one then, huh? Uh, yeah, the, the Happening is kind of silly. Like, yeah. I, I'll say that. Like, um, uh, 
the concept is is um, people start like they'll be going about their day, they'll be perfectly fine, and then all of a sudden they'll just like they they don't even like change expression. They'll just like go over and they'll like kill themselves like with the most convenient way they possibly can. Like one guy's mowing his lawn and then just like lays the lawnmower down, sticks his head in the blade and kills himself. Um, there's like another scene where like the people are building a building and they just like start jumping off the building and like everyone's like, well, what's going on? Like what's happening? Why are people killing themselves? And they find out that there's a breeze that carries like a certain like a summer breeze. Does it, <laughs> it make you feel fine? Well, it didn't make them feel fine. It, it, it was either like a spore or like, um, there was something in the breeze that there was something in the water <laughs> uh, that um, once you got a whiff of it and there's enough of it, you wanted to just die. And uh, however you could at that particular moment, you would just do it. Um, like people will like drown themselves in water or something. So it's a little bit of a, of a final destination in a way. Kind of. And, and the whole thing was like nature was fighting back against man and making them making man kill itself and. Um, uh, it follows uh, like this group of people who are like trying to like survive and like just weird decisions are made in the movie. Like um, there, there's weird line deliveries uh, from the, from the main character. Um, like uh, they go to this old lady's house and she's like, Oh, you, you, she's like this kind of old crazy old lady. She's like, you want to drink my lemonade and steal my cookies. He's like, what? No. And like the the delivery is like so sarcastic and like almost like uh like no we don't want to steal your cookies that's exactly what we're gonna do but no <laughs> um you, you know and, and then like to prove that like they're not crazy like he has to sing like a uh, uh low back water um mm-hmm. and like it's just you know like there's weird delivery of lines and like weird delivery of like performances and. Uh, it's become kind of a meme movie, like just, just from like performances. Um, so like that that was kind of weird, and like the concept is a little silly, like uh, that uh, flowers are releasing like this like weird pollen that like, people like want to die. Um, yeah. So. Um, oh, and like he he's like trying to talk to a plant, like he's like, oh, we're, we're your friends, he's, like we're not gonna hurt you, and like please don't try to kill us, and. Uh, like, like yeah, the whole movie is just kind of like weird and yeah. like silly. So um, I'm sure if it was a straight comedy, it would be that scene would happen with a bulldozer like behind them, like <laughs> other trees. Yeah, we're here to be like uh, pay no attention to that yellow thing over there. That, that's okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, you know where I can dump all this toxic waste? Yeah, <laughs> over in the river. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like that that didn't help because that was a. Uh, that was like a few years after the Sixth Sense, so like that, um, that that really didn't help things. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, let's talk about a little bit of Halloween Horror Nights news. Okay. Um, I know a little bit of information that uh, I can't talk about, but we can talk about um, the Ghostbusters house details. Kind of came out. Okay. It's if you've paid attention at all to Halloween Horror Nights in the past, it's it's not that surprising. Um, it's to be a house based on the movies, and you mm-hmm. go through the house and see different iconic scenes from the movie. Yeah. Okay. Big shock. Yeah. Not really. But um, I'm not sure where the house is going to be. Um, I'm hoping it's near the facade that's in the trailer. Yeah. Um, I would love to see, to see the open the house entrance be in, in the facade for the firehouse, but I think it might be uh, a safety hazard because there's things in it like supports for the coaster and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but the announcement trailer was really cool. Yeah. It was, it was, I kept watching it to see like, what is, like they, they kept the wardrobe proper and the where he he ran was, was correct. Um, I kind of wonder when it was shot, but the only thing that is off about it is um, it plays off of what people expect the theme park to be like at night. 
um, with one person oh, yeah. roaming around the one security officer roaming around the park with a flashlight. Which, <laughs> um, I guess if we didn't work there, we might think that. Yeah, uh, yeah. But there, there are probably up to two hundred people working there um, on the overnight third shift between yeah. attractions and security and park services and tech, uh, you know, tech and um, horticulture with uh, the plants and stuff. It, there, it's obviously not as crowded during the day as it is during the day, but there are people, like a significant number of people working uh, at the resort mm -hmm. and like at any theme park, um, 24 hours a day. Yeah. And even when there's a hurricane that comes through and, and uh, closes everything, there are still people on property yeah um writing it out so as soon as soon as soon as it passes um you know that they can they can start recovery but you know i understand that the idea of this one person walking around the park and it's completely empty yeah, yeah. is kind of just playing off of what what people expect it to be but no there's there are people there are security off and and there, there are team members everywhere uh during the park uh in the park during those hours too well, but yeah like most most guests um, yeah, it's different for us because we work there. But like you know, most guests, like, and um, like as soon as they leave, they probably think everybody leaves, and like you know the, the park shuts down, and yeah. like that's it for the night. Um, and then you know like they come back and do it all over again tomorrow. Now they they do shut off a lot of the lights, and the music eventually shuts off, and all mm -hmm. that. But yeah. um, the city walk itself doesn't even close till, till two a.m. Yeah. And then the sweep takes even longer. Yeah, but. It, it's a solid trailer, though. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. I did think that was kind of silly. Like, why does that security guard have a flashlight? Oh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. for visual effect. Um, I mean, I'm sh they, they do carry flashlights, especially yeah. when, uh, when we're clearing out the park, you know, to check the dark areas. I'm sure they have flashlights that they use, but, I mean, that's the stereotypical night watchman yeah, yeah, like, with a flashlight around. And it is, it is actually darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because once everyone leaves and third part shift starts going, they, they don't, keep on all of the lights you know why brian why dave because green is universal that's right dave um even though there's a bunch of really giant energy sucking lights uh in the concept drawing of uh universals universals epic universe you uni, know uh, sorry universals epic universal universe at universal universe orlando universe <laughs> <clears throat> Um, also, uh, Brandy, when you watch this again, um, he, Brandy was ask, asking, where are your, uh, where's your t-shirt, which predicts the future? And I said, you already bought it. Did Killer I? Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. two years in a row. That's why you didn't find a new, a new, um, t-shirt at Megacon because you already bought it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It predicted the future two years in a row. Now you have to buy something next year that'll, that'll be new. Oh man, the pressure's on now. I, I don't. I don't really think they're going to have it three years in a row. Although it's it's Killer Clowns from, from Outer Space, not The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will say I think I think Universal did learn um, as much as like it brought in guests. And people still are like, "Where is Walking Dead?" Really? Yeah. Huh. Um, Five years in a row of Walking Dead was a little bit overkill. Yeah. Um, I'm not big on zombies, so to me it was it was like. Eh. Um, now I feel the opposite about the Purge, like like and the Purge wasn't every year, but like I, some people were like, oh the Purge again. Oh. Yeah, uh, I, I felt that way too, especially the year, it was the last year, a year before where they had a house and a scare zone. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Come on. Yeah. But um, like I don't mind the purge because I like the concept of the purge. Now I'm I'm a little worn out on zombies, so yeah, I wasn't. Well, this could possibly be another zombie, but we, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially like uh, what was it like, Hard Nights twenty three, so two thousand thirteen, where it was all Walking Dead everywhere. Yeah. The all of the scare zones were Walking Dead. The theme song was playing over yeah, they, and over and they, over again, which I thought would be annoying, but I didn't really notice it. Um, maybe if we worked in the park by, at that time, yeah. we would notice it. Yeah. But um, they, they, that was, was it one or two years they got rid of scare zones and then they brought them back? Yeah, yeah. Um, just like they got rid of the icons, unfortunately, which I still miss. Yeah. Um, 
but they bring it back occasionally, but uh, but also um, there's still some houses in. Uh, I don't think they've announced. They haven't announced any scare zones yet. So mm, yeah, um, we're assuming that Academy of Villains will be coming back. But um, actually, I'm not sure because last year they rehearsed in a certain spot and they haven't been there yet. So either they're rehearsing in another spot or they might not come back. Um, and was Academy announced pretty early last year? I don't remember. Yeah. A lot of things were announced pretty early last year. It's kind of running late again this yeah, year, like yeah. two years ago. Um, so I think that's pretty much all we can say about that for now. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm speculating the Academy, it, it could go either way, but I, I'm not sure Academy's coming back. And not because I don't want them to come back. I, I liked Academy of Villains. Um, but... Um, yeah, I just I haven't seen them about, but that doesn't mean that they're, they're not coming. Yeah. Well, um, another thing at Universal is uh, the fuel rods, mm -hmm. uh, fuel rod stations are, are coming are being put in a few other places. One of them being Volcano Bay, mm -hmm. um, and a few other stations. Did you remember that it's thirty dollars for a fuel rod, and then it's unlike other places, it's another uh, three dollars to have it swapped out. Um, and now over to Lego Movie, I mean to Legoland, for the Lego Movie days, which I just went to uh, last weekend. Finally, um, they are still continuing. I did see a video from someone who had the the parade on it, and then they're like, "Okay, well that was it from Lego Movie days." And I went there. I'm like, "Wow, there's a whole list of things. There's like exclusive uh, food items. There's a parade, but there's also a dance party, and." Uh, I forgot to bring it with me, but there's like another um, mosaic that they're putting together with Lego bricks like they had. Oh, cool. Uh, they're building a giant Emmet. Um, if you haven't seen it over my Orlando channel, I just put up a video about about it. Uh, I saw most of it. Uh, luckily, like when I walked in, within like two minutes, the parade happened. Oh, nice. Where I was. I'm like, okay, that's a good start. Yeah. Uh, then not long afterwards... It started to rain, and it didn't stop the rest of the time I was there. Uh, so I didn't get to see the character meet and greet because they still walk outside mm -hmm. uh, to get to the meet and greet area. And I wore my bathing suit and didn't even get to go to the water park because there was lightning around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I wore it all day for, for nothing. Yeah. Um, it was good that I wore my sandals because, you know, it was wet and it was yeah. raining, so that kind of worked. Oh, oh, by the way, if you ever do go to Legoland and you're interested in character meet and greets, they happen in the, uh, the hotels as well. Yeah. Um, both the uh, the beach bungalow um, and beach the, retreat. Yeah, the beach retreat. Yeah, and um, the Legoland hotel. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, which is kind of unusual, at least in my experience. Um, they do that over at at um, Nuts Berry Farm as well. Okay. When I was over at their hotel, Snoopy was. It was in the lobby. Yeah. Um, mo most other hotels don't do that kind of thing. Um, though some of our hotels have, have shows. Yeah. But um, just realizing the, the green part of the mug is, is being keyed out. Oh. <laughs> um, so if you do go and you're interested in American character meet and greets, remember to um, save time for the hotel. Because that, that's where it happens. Not, not exclusively. There are... Plenty of character meet and greets, especially in the make Lego the move the new Lego Movie World, and outside of the um, Wells Fargo Theater, yeah. it's another spot where they are, where they you have meet and greet and stuff like that. But it is, it is a, a little bit of a mix, um, and I'm going to be soon showing you guys uh, the new miniature golf course. Uh, thing is with that is you cannot use it unless you're staying on one of the two on-site hotels. So mm -hmm. don't. Don't um, expect to go there as a guest of this, the park and be able to play mini golf. You, you won't be able to. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a more of a perk. Like for if you're staying on property, it's not uh, unfortunately like a quick little Uber over to Disney World. Um, so it's giving you something else to do. Well, after the parks close. Yeah. Which um, uh, Legoland does tend to close a little early. Yeah. Um, well. Especially compared to, to Disney World, which sometimes closes at like 12 a.m., yeah. um, which Universal doesn't generally do for day guests. Yeah. Um, 
So that's what's happening over there. Um, and I think that's about it for, for this episode. Um, yeah, I'm prob I'm going to set this to uh, private after we've done the stream and, and see what happened with that. <laughs> okay. I, I, I didn't realize I had the preferences open, but it has my phone number and my email addresses and stuff. Can you um, blur it out? I have to upload it all over again. I see. Um, all right. So hopefully none of you screen captured it and sold it online or something. I don't know. But um, thank you again to Brett too for being here. I know it was a little clunky, but um, we're working out how to make that work um, and to have him come on the show as well. Uh, he's going to be helping me when he's here with the with the camera switching. Um, we might I might set up an area over there. Um, he's going to kind of be our um, Robin. Was it Withers? What, what's her last? Robin from uh, um, uh, the Howard Stern show. Oh, uh, Robin something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, Robin does the news. Right, but she has her own little area. But she's also part of the show. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, anytime we're talking, he'll. <laughs> if it goes the way I think it is. Um, I may have the laptop over there or whatever streaming device I use. I might use my uh, Mac mini. Uh, he'll have the access to the switcher. So um, if he has anything to say, he, he could put himself on camera. Cool. Um, also, don't really have to touch the audio board once we get started, but you know, he's going to help me with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. The audio is functioning correctly. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to do that after this show. I just, but I, it took I, me a I like while. it. I, I it took it's... me a while to, to figure out how to do it. Uh, that's funny though. I, I like it. Um, it's just funny because when I was on a, a local internet radio show uh, recently, uh, well, I guess it was a bit, about a year or so ago, um, I had mentioned that uh, I like Pink Floyd, but I don't like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> and the, the host did that with um, what I did before with the reverb, and he's like, Land Dave doesn't like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> and I was like, wow, how did you do that so fast? Yeah, now it, now it, I know. It's a button. It, it, it's, an, uh, it's a feature of the mixer I, I didn't need, but um, I needed something bigger because it has more channel inputs and more control. And like when I'm testing his audio, I, I was hearing all the audio at the same time. This actually has mutes on it, which is nice. Um, I'm sure I'm going to review it on Dave Tech when I get a chance. It looks, but, like, it looks like a pretty hefty soundboard from what I can see. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be good. And, and, you know, with with Brett possibly coming in uh, in studio and being here in person and I'm looking up the one I had before and it's like, I'm going to need another microphone and, you know, it's going to get more complicated. So uh, it, it was time for an upgrade. And segue, thank you guys because you helped me. Um, a good portion of the money that went to buying this soundboard was from the AdSense or the uh, the ads on these videos, people clicking on them. I just recently recently got paid by Google. Oh, nice! And you'll notice on my in the description of my videos, on the uh, after the, the main description, there's a list of products. If you are shopping at Amazon, and you uh, if you click on that link. You can buy whatever the link is for, but you don't have to buy that product. You could buy something else. Um, I will, all I see is what item got ordered. I don't see like your name or any anything like that. I just see that oh somebody ordered uh, whatever, um, but it it doesn't affect your cost. I get a percentage of the sale if you go through my link, and every month I get some Amazon credit. I keep seeing a flash on the screen. And yeah, I, I see it too. I, by the time I look, it's already gone. It, it's, it's really just like a little bloop of the, like black. And so I'm not sure like- Weird. It, it might actually be your, your actual screen. I don't know. So um, what I'm saying is if you, if you go, if you're shopping in Amazon, um, please follow the link, bookmark it or whatever. Um, if you buy anything else within a certain amount of time, I get credit uh, on Amazon. So I bought this mixer with, with Amazon credit before. Nice. Um, same with like this, this microphone. Uh, most of the stuff I'm buying, these, these lights up here, they all come from Amazon. 
uh, not because I'm lazy and I don't want to go out to the store, just because it's things that I, I can't find locally. Yeah, sure, um, sure. So that besides being a patron, oh, I was going to talk about that too. Uh, that's something you could do uh, that's, I, I like to say it's free, but it isn't. It's free in a sense that if you're already buying something on Amazon, it doesn't cost you extra. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is on my, on my Patreon, I finally can add image galleries on the page, which is something that I that's assumed that Patreon had from the beginning, but they didn't. And I am now going to, I've, I've been shooting video, or video of course, but I've been shooting photos um, at a lot of the times when I'm out shooting videos and I had nowhere to put them um, really. So I, I hope, Brandy, that you don't mind. Um, that's why I was like, oh, I should have talked about it while she was here. Uh, but I know you're gonna be watching later. I hope you don't mind that I, ha I did add a $2 tier to Patreon because it is something that uh, does take extra time and extra effort um, and it is an extra perk and I am, I am trying to build up the Patreon as well. Um, so uh, I know that's a level higher, but um, it is an extra perk. So I, I did want to at least add it for in the future for the $2 and above um, tiers. Um, as far as me going back to California next year, I, I don't know. Mm. Um, it was an amazing trip, and it, I did see a lot, and got to go to theme, the theme park I've been to, but haven't in a long time. A theme park I have never been to, uh, a water park I've never been to. That was the first time I've ever been to an indoor water park. That was pretty cool. It was yeah. a whole, a whole party, um, but it was very, very expensive at the same time, and it was a. Uh, I don't know how much I actually got out of it, but. I might also go to something that's called uh, Creator Summit that happens in October. Um, I won't be able to go this year because it's too soon, but maybe I'll hopefully be able to go to Creator Summer Summit next year if it's in October again, but it's a significantly larger amount of money um, to, to attend. Why don't you try for like every other year? I don't know. Um, We'll see. I I just need to keep growing everything. Yeah. Uh, need to get you know more more ad revenue and more uh, patrons and stuff like that. I'd like to go um, and and you know bring you guys more videos from California as well. And if I go next year, I I'm pretty sure, or you know 2021 whatever, um, I'm gonna make a big big better effort to get to Universal Hollywood, I just didn't have the time to do that as well. Yeah. Um, I was already staying at the hotel room an extra night, yeah. um, so that was a stretch. As much as I wanted to, it just, um, the Disney World, Disneyland was like a mile from where my hotel room was, and Knott's Berry Farm was 10 miles from yeah. where I was, so like that was easy. Yeah, yeah, um, and I, I agree with it. Um, Cause like you and me talked about it um, and you're like, well, I could, but it's like, what would you say? Like an hour drive? It, at least, but that was like when I was looking at it in Google and, yeah. and if there's an accident or heavy traffic or something like that. The other problem is, is um, I, the day I flew in, I had to go to the hotel, check in, drop off my luggage, and then it would be maybe an hour from there and then I wouldn't get to sit to Universal until like 12, 1 p.m. Yeah. And then I'd, I'd have the rest of the day, but that'd be it. Yeah. And if I left on the final day, I'd have to leave Universal early enough to anticipate the traffic, to get to the hotel, to pick up my luggage, to then go to the airport, and then go through security, and then get to the gate. Um, and you know, all of those mean that like, I'd have to leave Universal really early. And I, I did, if I'm, I was like, if I'm going to go, I'm going to want to go and not just be like, here I am. Okay, I'll have to leave. Yeah. I, I, I think you made the right decisions with maximizing your time, which is really good. And 
part of being a theme park veteran is maximizing time. Yeah. I actually got more sleep than I thought I would because you remember we, we were getting like four hours, especially <laughs> you, like four hours of sleep Yeah. Um, when we would come up for Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. Um, and like the first year, we didn't even see the day the, the park in the daytime. No, no. Uh, we, the first time we went on a, a ride was during Horror Nights. And, yeah. And then we, re- we later on realized like that was, even though the wait times are short. Yeah. Um, we cut into the time for houses, unfortunately, but right, and we didn't that first year we didn't see everything. But we also we were, we were both pretty brand new to Hard Nights. Like yeah. you had been there, but like not for years. So um, it, it, we both kind of wanted to go on the Simpsons. So yeah, it, it was a rookie mistake in the fact of like, well, if we're maximizing time, we can't, we don't have time for attractions. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, we we're both like, well, it's the Simpsons. Let, let's just go on it, you know. And, and it, it was kind of a nice break from the houses. But, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we got to, uh, I think, miss two houses. We, uh, I think we missed three. Um, so, like, it was a rookie mistake in, in yeah. maximizing time. But, like, neither one of us had been on the Simpsons and we wanted to go on the Simpsons. So. It's a good thing that the park wasn't like it was last year. Oh yeah! Oh um, yeah! Man, yeah. We wouldn't have gotten nearly as much progress. As I think we, we, we would have maybe seen three houses. And we didn't end up getting express until like a couple of years later, um, and we already had already started going more nights too. I think we went to twenty, and we were like, "All right, well, we need we need more than one night to do this." Yeah, and I also <clears> was like, "I'm not driving home." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was the other part. over three hours. Yeah, and I was like, I was getting delusional yeah so like uh well the good thing is between us we we figured out our rookie mistakes very quickly yeah like so we we figured the first year all right we need more than one night plus this poor guy can't drive for six hours you know total and you know be on his feet for another six hours well well, the thing is that we left i think it was 1 a.m yeah 1 a.m but by the time we got to city walk the parking the parking garage it was 1 30 almost pushing 2 a.m yeah yeah and then i had a Three uh, about three hour drive on, on on top of that. Yeah. And oh, uh, you know, I would never, I would never exceed the speed limit. No. <laughs> um, but you know, when it's three or four or five a.m. Yeah. And yeah. the roads are pretty empty. Yeah. If you do go a little over five past the speed limit, you're gonna stand out. Yeah. So, as as much as you should be careful driving. Um, if you don't want to get pulled over, you know, that time of the night, it, take, it took even longer to drive home because I had to be even more careful than, than normal. And, and the fact that I, that I was, you know, tired. Yeah. Um, and studies some have shown that being drowsy at the wheel can be at least as bad as being intoxicated. Yeah. Now, um, we were back for 21, and we did a couple nights. And I think we did two nights of Horror Nights, and we saw everything. I think that was when we were staying at that hotel with the suites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we, we missed 22. Yeah. Um, we were back for 23. That was Walking Dead. And yeah. that was, was when... Was that the year that we stayed in on site? Or that, no, or was that the that was the next year, I think? 21, we stayed at the Hard Rock. Oh, okay. And then 23, we stayed at the, the other hotel okay. on Sand Lake. And... And that was Walking Dead, so that was when uh, guest uh, crowds were getting kind of crazy and like everything was like yeah. 70 minutes or more. Um, so then for 24, we we're like, all right, well, let's get Express. So we're going to do uh, Frequent Fear with Express. Um, and then we also decided to do Unmasking the Horror because we're both big Horror Nights fans. Yeah. And we didn't know about it until then. Yeah. And then... For 25, we're like, all right, well, it's going to be crazy busy again. So we're going to need Freaker Fear plus Express, and we'll do a mask in the horror, and we'll, we'll stay at the hotel. And so, like, yeah, I, I do like how we, we learned very quickly of, like, what we should yeah. do. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, yeah, I, if you're not getting Freaker Fear or if you're not here for, like, several days, if you're here for, like, maybe one or two nights... For Horror Nights, you're going to need Express. You're just going to yeah. need to. Um, and the thing is, that we also, I remember t- in one of our reviews, we're like, it's too bad that you have to leave the park to go back to, to Halloween Horror Nights. And then 
later years we found out you don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we I think we kind of wanted to go back to the hotel anyway, but like we um, and then we heard about staying scream. Yeah. Um, so like, um, but I think I think we because we went to the daytime park and then we we both wanted a break anyway, so yeah. we went back to the hotel. Um, and we yeah. didn't also know about resort priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, uh, there's a whole area. Maybe they didn't do it. I don't know. But there's a whole area where people can load in uh, for I think earlier. At least ahead of everyone else, if you're staying on site, which mm -hmm. we were the one year, and yeah. we, we didn't, we weren't able to take advantage of that, unfortunately. Yeah, but like, uh, and those were all kind of rookie mistakes that we we were making. Yeah. Like, uh, okay, well now Universal's closed, we have to physically exit the gates and turn around for Hard Nights, where we didn't have to do that. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate that back back then we had to go into the gate and then wait. And this is a mis something I didn't, I don't, I didn't like. Then um, we had to wait for the park to open, and then we had to go through the metal detectors because they weren't, they were, there weren't metal detectors all year round yes, like, that's like right, there are that's now. Right. Um, what I wish they would have done is put the metal detectors out in the perimeter, had people go through them a little bit at a time, and then have everyone wait at the gate, and mm -hmm. then when it opens, go in. Yeah. Um, which they you know kind of do now with the metal detectors everywhere you can enter, but it was kind of annoying. It's like, yay, the park's open, but we're still in the same line because we haven't moved. Yeah. So Alan McGuire has a a good comment. He said, uh, "I'm definitely doing the RIP tour again this year because of all the popular RIPs this year. It was worth every penny." <laughs> I hope so because that's a lot of pennies. Yeah. Um, I, I happen to agree. Like our RIP is definitely worth it in the sense of. Um, you will see everything, definitely, because it's it's yeah. priority entrance to the house, and they just they really they march right up and okay, RIP and uh, working. The both of us have done a house attendant like yeah. there, there's somebody standing. There, it's not um, Express. Express is another line. There's yeah. someone else standing there with uh, an iPad. Oh, it's not really an iPad. But well, it, a pad to specifically scan the RIP tour in. It's right, like the last thing before you actually enter the house. And when you, when we see them come with a little mm -hmm. light wand, we automatically uh, stop the line and, yeah. and scan them in. And they go, they are the next people, literally the next people to go into the, the entrance of the house. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's expensive, but like it's definitely worth it. You will see everything yeah. and it's priority seating for the shows. Um, or show. Well, it, yeah, depending. Like, there's normally two shows, but uh, sometimes there's only one. Um, we'll see what that happens this year. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> sometimes you'll get an RIP guide who will go through the house with you, and sometimes they'll check it out. It depends on the it depends on the tour guide. Um, but some, they'll they'll meet you at the other end. Yeah. Some of them really really are, are like big horror night fans as well. Um, well, they obviously have to be a Horror Nights fan because you have to know so many things about oh, yeah. the houses. Yeah, but like I said, and, and some some of them don't like want to go through the house, or like some of them will like maybe be tired of a certain house and meet you at the exit. Yeah. So, anyway, that's our that's our tour of Halloween Horror Nights with our uh, history, our Horror Nights history. Yeah. And um, maybe next year I'll. Uh, be able to audition early and, and get in to get as a scare actor. Hopefully like, so. Like this guy probably will be this year. I hope so too. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to go through and be like. Yeah. But who knows? This year could be your your year with makeup and a mask. I or don't. Who knows? I don't think nobody else this year just based on what they asked me to do. But um. Uh. But yeah, definitely like. Uh, for Hard Nights 30, I definitely want to be a scare actor. Like, that's that's not yeah. even a, a question. Well, I'm going to try. But the thing is that they, what they look for, it, they just might not have been someone who, who fits my build or description. Or there might have been several roles, but by the time I was allowed to audition, it was too late. Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, that's our long and windy road of a show today. And um, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, you're not going to call me on my phone. <laughs> um, I already get enough unwanted calls as, as it is. So, bye, guys.